Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about something else that you can do with CSS. So we're going to actually use the file from last time of the buttons that you created with CSS. We did a hover effect, which you can see in this file. When we put our mouse over it, it lights up. Now we can do more with that. Not only can it light up, but we can also make it move. We can control how much it moves and the speed at which it moves. And we do all of this through CSS. We don't need Flash. We don't need Photoshop. We can do it just with CSS. So I'm opening brackets. Here's the CSS file. Let's just jump to the index just so you can see. Here's what we made last time. Here's the CSS. You can see the div properties on the hover properties. I'm going to take out the margin auto because I don't want it to be centered. It'll be just a little bit easier to get this to work if I take that out. If we add in a margin left and we give it a certain amount, this will work even right now. We open this up in Firefox. We're going to use that for the first part of the day. You can see it jumps. It's not quite what we're looking for. It's very harsh, very sudden. Um, could be confusing to a viewer. We want something a bit smoother, not so harsh, not so sudden. And so what we're going to use is we're going to use a CSS property called transition. So we'll just make a new line, and we'll put transition, and we'll put property. We'll do margin left. That will tell it to specifically target the margin left property when using this transition. Now if we open it up with Firefox once again, it still looks kind of the same. That's not quite what we're going for. So we need to add something else to it, and that's transition duration. Semicolon and one second. We could make it longer if we wanted to, but we'll just go with one second for now. So you can see that it moves much smoother, but notice that's kind of weird. It is actually pushing the div tag over, and as soon as our mouse isn't on it anymore, it bounces back. That's not really ideal, but if you made it move just a little bit, it probably would be okay. We probably have it just moving too much. So let's go ahead and drop this down to 100. We'll save it and we'll refresh. There you go. Now, you still have that issue if someone puts their mouse on the left side, but most people won't. Most people will probably bring their mouse on the right. On the left, you can see, still an issue, but who's going to do that? People cl typically click on the middle of things. So as long as it's not jumping in a lot, you should be all right. Now, what if we want it to do something else, too? So it changes color. But what if we wanted that to be a fade instead of a sudden jump? So can we just do transition property background color? So let's see what happens. And that sort of worked. It is now fading gradually, but the movement is no longer smooth. Now the movement is jumping. So there's obviously an issue here. What if we just, you know, duplicate it? So obviously, the transition duration is affecting the background color, and that's what it's below. So what if we just move it below margin left as well? Just make a copy of it and move it below margin left. But that's not working. That seems logical, but it doesn't actually work that way. Transition duration is not an effect of transition property. It is not a subset of it. So you can't just copy and paste it again. And if you could do this, then it would have two values for one property. There'd be two variables for one variable. So how would it know which one to use? So actually what's happening, when you tell it transition property semicolon something, that's assigning a value. That is saying that it equals this. So if you tell it that once, that it equals that. Then you tell it a second time that it equals something else. You've just overwritten what it said the first time. So it's like if I said that, you know, the cookies this afternoon are chocolate, and then 20 minutes later I said, oh, wait, they're not chocolate. They're peanut butter. Like, I just changed the assignments. So we have to do this differently. We can't have two transition properties, and we can't have two transition durations. We have to figure out how to merge them into one, so that way the browser has only one value that it's looking at, and it happens to include both. 
So all we're actually going to do is we're just going to have the one transition property, and we're just going to add background color below it. So now we have both in there. They are both part of that property. One CSS attribute, one value. That value just happens to be two things, and that's fine. And now you can see that they both work, and they are both smooth. Now, what if we try it in Safari? There's a little bit of an issue here. You can see that it's not working. It jumps. The transition property and the transition duration don't seem to be having any effects. And that's because some of these are new things. CSS has been around for a while, but it continues to change. We continue to add things to it. What we need is we need a WebKit. Some of the new cool things, they're not fully implemented yet. Not everybody is using them. But browsers still want to have them, so they have things called WebKits. And so what we need to do is we need to tell the browser to load this. Even though it's not standard, go ahead and load it anyway, because we would like to use it. Now the code for that is going to differ from one browser to another, so you have to know the code for it. It actually didn't used to work in Firefox either. You used to have to tell Firefox to use a, a WebKit as well, but Firefox is now implemented as sort of standard CSS. So for Safari, as well as Chrome, we have to put in special code. And that special code for the WebKit is actually just WebKit when it comes to Safari and Chrome. So we're going to do WebKit, Transition, Property, and Margin Left, just like we did above. And we'll include both properties in there. It's still just one value, but we'll include both in there. And we'll also do WebKit, Transition, Duration. So we'll go ahead and save this. Let's go ahead and open it back up in Safari. And now you can see it works. So it now works in Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. Now something I'd like to point out if I move my mouse up on the edge where it is leaving the div, notice that my mouse is not on the div anymore. Now it's on the div. Now it's not. But it's not bouncing back like it did in Firefox. The computer, or more appropriately Safari and Chrome, they are not constantly refreshing the position of the mouse. It was on the div tag the last time that I set it on it, so it's still taking effect. Now it is currently not on it. Even though it is, it wasn't the last time I sent data, so it's not affecting it, which is different than how Firefox loads it. Firefox constantly is refreshing the position of the mouse, and so that's why we saw the bounce back and forth. Now keep in mind it's only working for Safari and Firefox and Chrome right now. If we wanted for it to work in IE, or Opera, or some of the other ones, we would have to look up how to use the WebKits for those. What is the special command for it to load them? We're going to go ahead and add another CSS property in here, and that is transition timing function. We have quite a few choices here, as you can see. Let's just go ahead and look at ease in for right now. and let's actually increase the margin just so it's easier to see what exactly it's doing. Ah, I forgot the semicolon. And to make sure that it works in Safari and Chrome, let's go ahead and add the WebKit prefix in the front. Helps if you don't typo. Now if we open it and refresh it, Did you notice the difference in the acceleration from before? Before it was a standard speed, and now the speed slightly changes over time. It starts a little bit slower. What if we try ease in and ease out? So it should start slow, go a little bit faster, and then slow down right before it stops, which you could see there. Started a little slow, went fast, and slowed down a little bit. Let's compare that to ease out. See how it slowed down at the end, but started pretty quick? 
Now there's one more that I'd like to show you. I like this one quite a bit. It's called steps. We're going to go ahead and put a value in here. We're going to put three and then we're going to put end. And we'll do the same thing down here. Add that in there. We'll go, we'll go ahead and save that and refresh. Now uh, we'll actually just go ahead and reopen it and refresh. There you go. Now notice how many jumps it made. If we change this value, notice the number of jumps. The number of jumps is the number that we have in there. Now keep in mind, I didn't just write three or I didn't just write six. I wrote three and end and then I changed it to six and end. So those are just a few of the things that you can do. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, you can very quickly and easily let me know by just clicking the thumbs up or the like button. If you need any help, let me know and I will see what I can do.